present day it's alicia again and we will be continuing our bible study on isaiah 44 we'll be finishing up so we'll be doing from verse 13 verses 13 through to 28. now before we begin as is as is required we will be inviting the Holy Spirit into our study. Let's pray. And also, just before I pray, for those who are watching this, you may have missed the first part. I'll put a, I'll put a link here for you. And I'll also include the link in the bio. Okay, let's pray. Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus, asking for you to allow us to have the privilege of the Holy Spirit to go ahead before us, searching through the words and giving us the interpretations thereof. We humble ourselves before you. We acknowledge that you are God and God alone. We acknowledge that we are your children and that without you, we are nothing. And without the Holy Spirit in our lives to comfort us and to reveal the truth unto us, we would otherwise be lost. So we acknowledge our need for you and we acknowledge our need for the Holy Spirit. And we are grateful to Jesus for dying for us and also for requesting of you to send us the Holy Spirit so that we could be in oneness with you and Jesus along with the Holy Spirit. And as we are about to begin, go and interpret for us the words that you have to speak towards us concerning the scriptures that we're about to read and help us that we will not just read empty words but that the words that we read will be life to us there will be spiritual food to us we, it will sink deep down into our souls and be planted by the holy spirit and watered so that it could bring forth fruits in abundance. Father, I ask that you take away from us every single thing that is not in accordance with your will. I ask that as we read the scriptures, if we are convicted, if there's anything you want to show to us, please do so and help us to have the acknowledgement of it and help us to give us the, the, the wherewithal to submit whatever you expose to us to you so that you could help us through the guidance of the Holy Spirit to present it to you for removal from our lives. Um, we are at your mercy because without your sure mercies, we, are, we cannot survive. And we are in need of your love and your eternal protection we give you all glory and honor that's due to your name we worship you and you alone because you are our god and our king so thank you for always being there for us and for always protecting us and guiding us and bringing us closer to you for us to be able to be in oneness with you. And I ask and pray in Jesus' name, the only name through which we can have that oneness with you. Because Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. So we acknowledge and we are appreciative of Jesus and his sacrifice 
and not only his sacrifice, but having already prayed for us, we acknowledge sanctification by him through him, and we acknowledge his good gifts towards us. And we say thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> so let's continue. Um, verse 13. The carpenter stretched out his rule. He marked it out with a line. He fitted it with planes. And he marked it out with the compass and make it it after the figure of a man, according to the beauty of a man, that it may remain in the house. Okay. So here is a carpenter creating an idol, or a statue, if you call it, or a mini god or a figurine if you want to call it that so he's going through the process of carving it out measuring it to make sure it's exactly what he wants carving it out fitting it using <laughs> using the image of god because remember, we are created in God's image. So here is using the image of God to create this thing. And then after creating it, wishing for it to remain in his house. Now, this is why idols are abominable things. Because... Some of them, or most of them, are made to look like us. And the very fact that they're made in our likeness, bear with me here. We are made in God's likeness. These idols are made in our likeness. How then did these idols become God? You can get an understanding of why God would be very riotous with us for practicing these things. Because not only is it a lie, because you cannot become God. And if we as people who are made in his image cannot become him, how then is an inanimate object lifeless? How is that going to become God? That's an absolute disrespect to our Creator. And that's why He cannot, He will never, ever stomach to see any of His children falling down before an idol and worshiping. He cannot stomach it. You know, it's profane. Verse 14, he hewed him down cedars and take at the cypress and the oak, which he strengthened for himself among the trees of the forest. He planted an ash and the rain dot nourished it. So... <laughs> It gets worse because the carpenter is picking the choice trees of the forest with which to make him this God that he's going to create for himself. And he diligently plant it and he water it and he watch it come to the place where he thinks it's ready now. To become a god you see even the saying of it doesn't make sense it, it, it's 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 just absolute abominable you know and 
the foolishness of it, we could see it when it's described here in scripture. We could see it, that it is utter nonsense. But you find that people are seriously worshiping these things and they're falling down to them and they're put in reverence and they are giving obese, obeisance to them. And you know, these are the same people will tell you they don't understand what you're talking about when you try to tell them about our creator. They'll be like, I don't know, I don't know, I can't believe that. And this is my God and this is who gives me my life. <laughs> oh my goodness. You know, it's a caution to us as well. It's a caution because the mind that has been turned to be so foolish unless the Holy Spirit intervenes and unless the Holy Spirit is invited in when he knocks, th this foolishness would continue and it would be believed until a person may die. Or even sometimes people die and did not even come to the realization that what they worship was utter rubbish you know just a mere tree that has been fashioned into an idol they can't fathom it you know so when we have wisdom to know truth from lie and when we have the benefit and privilege of obtaining wisdom from our god we need to realize that this is precious because there's another person who is believing in a lie and faithfully believing in the lie. Mind you, falling down before that statue, idol, figurine, and bowing down before it in obeisance, morning, noon, and night, and praying unto it too, and expecting that it's gonna answer and provide them with blessings and, and other, other things. So we had to remember that there are people who actually believe in this thing. And I mean, no disrespect to people for being people, but I do, I must say that when it's, we have to call it what it is. When it is foolishness, it is foolishness. And idol worship is foolishness because we take the attention from our God to be living in a lie. And Further in the scripture you go, you will realize why it's such, why it's such a detrimental thing. Is because behind, hiding behind the, the image is our enemy, the devil. And he likes it when we give our glory that's due to our father, to him, even if indirectly. He will take it anyhow he could get it. Right? So... Even though it looks to the average person that this person is being loyal and faithful to an image and it's foolishness because they are being loyal and faithful to this inanimate object, their actual obeisance is to the devil. And we have to be careful because if we're not worshiping God, we're worshiping the devil. There's no, there's no other middle ground. It's one or the other. And the, and the devil do come in a lot of different forms. So keep that in mind. So verse 15. Then shall it be for a man to burn. For he will take thereof and warm himself. Yea, he kindled it and bake it bread. Yea, he make it a god and worship it. He make it in a graven image and fall it down there too. Now, this is why you see I tell you it's utter foolishness. The same tree that is made into a God is the same tree that is used to cook, that is used to kindle fire to warm, that is used to you know, especially back in the day, or some persons still use it 
to bake a cake. So you make, you use it to bake. You use it to cook your food. You use it to warm you in the fire. You even use it to, let, let, let's continue it now. The same tree. You use it to make your house. You use it to make your furniture. So you sit down on it. You sit down on the furniture. You eat around it. You lie down on it. You know, the same tree. You walk on it as you're flooring for some persons, you know. And you pound a nail into it to put something up on, you know. And it's, 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 it's so strange. The same tree over time will rot and you will have to do away with it altogether. And this is what has been turning to a God for worship and to be falling down and worshiping it. It's just, to the average person with wisdom, it seems foolish. And God calls it profane and abominable. And he's righteous every day with this kind of thing, especially because this act of worship is really directed towards the devil. People may say, oh, I never worship the devil, but if you don't worship the Lord and you worship something else, whatever form the devil take, you are worshiping. If you don't worship the Lord. There's no two way about it. Um, verse 16. He burned part thereof in the fire. With part thereof he eateth flesh. He roasted rose and is satisfied. Yea, he warmed himself and said, Aha, I am warm. I have seen the fire. This is a very, you see, it's reiterated. It's repeated for a reason. This is just to drive home the point that you can see it's wood. <laughs> you can see it's wood. It's wood. You are burning it in the fire. How, how does it become God? Are you burning your God in the fire? Wow. Why are you then destroying the same God you're worshiping? Why are you destroying your God in the fire? Is, is that making sense? So you burn it, it becomes ashes, and then what? You throw it out. It's done. So you're saying basically that your God can be destroyed. Let's be mindful. And the residue thereof, he maketh a God. Even his graven image, he falleth down unto it, and worshipped it, and prayed unto it, and said, Deliver me, for thou art my God. Very, very dangerous. Very, very abominable. And totally foolish. And you see... When we fail to accept our God and we accept something in the space of our God, this is how we look. And the devil, he is happy for company in hell. He is very happy for company. And that's why he will go and do everything to turn away our attention from our Father. Let's be mindful. Verse 18, they have not known nor understood, for he had shut their eyes that they cannot see, and their hearts that they cannot understand. Now, God doesn't just shut your eyes just because you want to shut your eyes. He shut your eyes when he has given you warning, one time, two times, three times. He has pointed out the obvious to you. This that you're doing is wrong. He sent you the conscience. He sent you people to talk to you. He show you in a dream even. But remember the devil show up in dreams too. So you have to know when the Lord is speaking from when he's not. 
But he warns you. He always warns. You always warn. And then when you continue to be stiff naked and continue to go seek another and seek another and seek another. Because see, sometimes the people falling down to these idols are and this is the case for Israel. Israel knew. Israel knew who God is. They knew. But it still wanted another God. They followed after the ways of the other nations around them. They wanted to be a part of the clique. So some people will do this thing because it's cool. Yeah, my idol. These days they have idols in the form of people who are, who are termed idols. And they are idols. Make no mistake about it. They are worshipped as if they are gods and they are not. That's why that's why the word idol is that's what the word idol is all about. So people will say, Oh, this is my idol, this is my and they're very happy to say, This is my idol, that is my idol. But make no mistake about it, it will be required of us. If we give God's glory to another, it will be required of us. There should be no one. And and after a while, when you stop hearing the one of God. Stop listening to his voice when the Holy Spirit speaks. He stops speaking to you. Not that he's not watching you. Not that he's not near if you need him. But he stops speaking because God is not going to force his way in. He's not the devil. Okay? The devil is going to force himself in because you know he doesn't have much time. As much as the time may seem long to us, it's a short time for a person who has been around for a very long time. Yeah? The time is shortened because he wants to get more and more and more and more and more on his side. In fact, he's aiming for everybody, but he can't get everybody, so he will take what he can get. So that's why we have to be careful not to have this happen to us where we can no longer hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. That's a very bad state to be in. And make no mistake, who is doing this? It is God who allow you to, 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 be, to be dumb, to be deaf, to be blind, you know. He is the one that takes away your wisdom and your perception. For as sure as he gives it, he will take it away. And who can tell him no? He's God. For the people who are willing to worship and, and obey, he will be near and he will give wisdom. For the people who are willing to not, he will take it away. Simple. That's how it is. Verse 19. And none consider it in his heart, neither is there knowledge nor understanding to say, I have burned part of it in the fire. Yea, also I have baked bread upon the coals thereof. I have roasted flesh and eaten it. And shall I make the residue thereof? an abomination shall i fall down to the stock of a tree you see how you see how it's making no sense now the lord is showing us this is rubbish this doesn't make sense this is not wisdom this is abominable and this is Something you don't want to find yourself doing. Verse 20. He feedeth on ashes. A deceived heart hath turned him aside. That he cannot deliver his soul. Nor say, is there not a lie in my right hand? This is very serious. Because you see now. Note the word, a deceived heart. Remember, this is where I'm telling you. The scripture is telling you who you're really worshiping. You know. It looks like a, a tree, but who you're really worshiping is the devil and his angels. Because who deceives? Who lies? The devil is the father. Jesus said it. The devil is the father of lies. That's his nature. That's, his, that's who he is. He cannot change his nature. 
that's just who he is and if you are in this state where you can't even perceive that what you're doing is a lie like why would you worship another human being why would you worship a graven image why would you worship a cold stone why would you worship why would you worship something that's created that makes no sense you know makes no sense verse 21 remember these O jacob and israel for thou art my servant I have formed thee, thou art my servant, O Israel. Thou shalt not be forgotten of me. So even when he is punishing us, he's reminding us, you know, he's leaving, he's leaving the warning still. He's pointing us, he's turning us away from the things that are not fitting. He's turning us away from the lifestyle that's not pleasing and befitting him. The things that would make him destroy you. He's turning you away from it. Did Jesus not die for your sins? Did Jesus not sacrifice for you to have salvation? Did Jesus not redeem your soul if you believe in him? Did he not invite you to have a relationship with him is he not asking you pray to the father in my name ask whatsoever you will and it will be given unto you is jesus not saying ask the father for the comfort of the holy spirit and he will come to you is jesus not saying look here are the words feast upon my words i am the i am the i am the word he said Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. He's saying, I am the living water. Drink of me. You shall not thirst again. This is him saying, come to me. Come to me. I am the way, the truth, and life. Come to me. This is the only way you can go to the Father. Come to me. Jesus is saying it all day long. And God will not forget us because remember now, we are his children. Why would he forget it? Can a mother forget her child? Even if a mother can forget her child, God cannot forget us. So please bear that in mind. We are his. Verse 22, I have blotted out as a thick cloud thy transgressions and as a cloud thy sins. Return unto me, for I have redeemed thee. So here is his words again. He has done the necessary. He cannot dwell in sin. He cannot stomach sin. He will never accept sin. Ever. Let no man deceive you. Let no man deceive you. In fact, this is a deception that has gone out in the world. Where some people are selling this concept that, oh, he's so loving and kind. And you make no mistake, God is loving, God is kind, but God hates sin. Because sin leads to death. And in God is only life. Death is not of him. So we have to remember, our God does not accept sin. For him to accept you and me, he has to blot out our transgressions. He has to hide our sin, destroy it, put it far away from us. Redeem us unto himself through Jesus. That's the only way. He will never accept our sins, ever. He will always accept us because we are of him. We are made in his image. We're made according to his likeness. We are his children. 
But sin, you will never accept. Let no man deceive you. Right? That's why a lot of persons right now, they're in trouble. Because they're thinking they are going to be accepted as they are in this sin. It doesn't happen that way. If, the, if that was possible, Jesus would not have to die. Think about it. Why would Jesus have to die for us? If God is going to just come one day and accept sin from some of us, it does not exist. It's not possible. Do not be deceived. Verse 23. Sing, O ye heavens, for the Lord hath done it. Shout, he lower parts of the earth. Break forth into singing, ye mountains, O forest, and every tree therein, for the Lord hath redeemed Jacob and glorified himself in Israel. Take key note here. God is calling on his creation. And this is one thing we must realize. If we don't, if you've never realized it before, creation know who God is. And creation worships God. Okay? The heavens know. The heart know. The mountains know. The forest itself know. The very tree that this person is making into a God knows. Okay? And another thing that we should get from this verse is that our redemption to God is a celebration moment, not just for us, but for creation and for heaven. Every single created thing with understanding is joyful at man's redemption to God. Why? Remember, we were created for dominion, to have dominion over everything created, everything. We were created to have dominion. So imagine now creation have to go through suffering as a result of our fall. Creation has to suffer because of us. Creation will, of course, rejoice when we're redeemed. Remember, in case you forget, remember, or in case you don't know, let me tell you. If we keep silent, the rocks will cry out and praise. I'm just sharing references to when creation testifies. The rock will cry out if we keep silent and don't praise. The ass or donkey that Balaam was driving to go curse Israel spoke. When Cain killed Abel, the ground, the blood from the ground cried out because all his descendants that were cut off with him, their existence were cut off and the blood cried. So take key note. Creation is able to praise God, and creation does. Or who do you think the birds are singing to? Or who do you think the trees lean and praise? Creation praise. The only created being or created thing that doesn't understand who God is, is us because of the fall. And that's what Jesus died to repair. So let, let not Jesus' death be to you in vain. It is not in vain, but to you it may be in vain if you do not believe. Because whether you believe or not, whether you accept salvation or not, Jesus died for your salvation. And it will be required of you to answer. Did you accept Jesus? Did you have a personal relationship with him? Does Jesus know you? Because that's what it's centered on. Can he says, come, he blessed to you. Come and inherit. Can he say that to you? Or will he say, depart, I know you not. That's what it's centered around. There's no other thing. It's that. Verse 24. 
Thus saith the Lord, thy Redeemer, and he that formed thee from the womb. I am the Lord that maketh all things, that stretcheth forth the heavens alone, that spreadeth abroad the hurt by myself. Now, this is another stamp of identity. Like, in case you have forgotten who you're supposed to serve, remember, it is me. That's what Yah is saying. I love to shout in Yahweh and say Yah. <laughs> but that's 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 God's name. For those of you wondering, right? I mostly use it in my personal moments with him, but sometimes, you know, it will come out. Fair warning. So what he's basically saying is, I am your redeemer. I am your redeemer. I'm the one who formed you from the womb. Because remember what I was explaining to you before. <clears throat> I think it was in 40, Isaiah 43. We were formed from the womb. Eggs and sperm could meet and nothing come of it. But for a perfectly healthy and normal person to come forward, eggs and sperm don't just meet alone. God forms. He calls us into being. He creates us. He is the maker of us all. And if you think that what I'm saying about eggs and eggs and sperms meeting all the time and nothing happened, go ask the people who have had miscarriages upon miscarriages upon miscarriages, or the people who have never, ever had conception. In fact, go read about Syria. Syria before she was Sarah. She had she had a lot of years on her and she didn't have a child. Think about Rachel. The Bible says God closed her womb. Think about Anna. The Bible says God closed her womb. So the only reason why you have children or the only reason why we have born is because God opens the womb for us to come forth. He formed us. And this is why, make no mistake about it, every children formed of God is precious in his sight. Very precious in his sight. And he doesn't play around. Even the hair, even the, the number of ears on our head is known by him. Nothing happens and, he, and, it, and it escapes his notice. He sees everything. So that's why he's saying, I am the one who, who make everything. I am the one who stretch out the heavens. I'm the one who spread it abroad the earth all by myself. I am alone in this. That's what he's saying. It's, it's only me. There was nobody else. You know, there was nobody else. So what now and how did, did we arrive at these other gods? Where did they come from? And who are they? Because if he doesn't know them, they don't exist. So let's be very careful not to exalt anybody or anything as a god. Because our god is very jealous and rightly so. Verse 25, that frustrateth the tokens of liars and maketh diviners mad, that turneth wise men backward and maketh their knowledge foolish. So here is where it's at. This is actually a praying point for those who are going through iniquity work. For those who are being enchanted, for those who are victims of witchcraft, 
you could take this as your praying point. Proclaim and declare this verse. You could proclaim verse 24 along with this one as the authority on which you stand against these iniquity workers and the devices they are, they, are, they are setting in motion against you. You could declare and decree this over your life that God himself frustrate the tokens of liars, right? He frustrate them. And remember, who is the father of lie? The devil. Okay? And make it diviners mad. So divination is not something for you to be practicing in, nor being a part of. So don't go seeking a diviner to tell you what your future is and how much children you will have and who you will marry and all this kind of thing and how your future will go. Your future is only in God. He alone knows your future. If you allow demons to tell your future, you will be sorry. Because they will take everything you have. And when there's nothing left, when you think there's nothing left, they'll take the most precious thing you have, which is your soul. Be very careful. So, he make it the diviners mad. They're trying to read you, and they can't read you. What are they going to read about you? What are they going to try to send witchcraft on you for? Which area of your life are they going to try to attack next? They are confused. Because one minute they thought you were going in that direction. The next minute you are in that direction. Next, they are going to be driven crazy. <laughs> because God does it. And, you know, you could claim this promise. He, he will do it for you, you know. In fact... He does it regardless of you praying and asking him. But just take note of it. When somebody try to put you under and try to do some evil towards you and it doesn't work and they're wondering why it's not working, remember this verse and give thanks to the Father. It cannot work because your fear is in God alone. You trust in God alone. He is your God alone. And he's very, 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 very faithful to the faithful. That's how he is. A principled and upright father we have. He honors his word. So remember, he, he turned the wise men backward, meaning they're prophesying things. They say not kind of thing going to happen. It never happened. See, this is how false prophets are brought to naught. They will tell you all kind of thing going to happen. Oh, I see where God is going to bless you with this. Oh, I see where God is going to bless you with that. They didn't see nothing, but they talk about it. And they become lies. Because lies they were, lies they are. And they, that's, why, that's why it says the knowledge became foolish. Because lies they speak, lies it will be. It will never manifest to be true. Because unless the Lord decrees it, it will not happen. And be very mindful of false and the Bible call it line wonders. Some people are so hungry for miracle, they are receiving a line wonder and don't even realize it. And the Lord will allow you to believe in the lie because you fail to trust him, so he will allow you to believe in the lie. Right? So be careful not to fall into these things. Somebody tell you, oh, I know somebody who I could bring you to. I know somebody who could help you. You don't need nobody to tell you this thing. Trust God. Is he not the one who formed you? Is he not the one who created you? Is he not the one who has sustained you up until the point at which so you're going to have somebody come and tell you, oh, I know someone. You know someone for yourself. Don't listen to people trying to get you into the bondage that they themselves are in. And that's another thing. Some people are so in bondage, they're so, they're so bound up that they don't even know how to get out of it. And they, they're looking companies, I tell you. It's no wonder when they say misery love company. The devil wants company in hell. Yeah? Don't become his company. All right? Verse 26, that confirm it the word of his servant and perform it the counsel of his messengers that say to Jerusalem, thou shalt be inhabited. 
and to the cities of Judah, he shall be built, and I will raise up the decayed places thereof. So this is what I was telling you. When you speak a word, we have to be careful of the words we speak, especially if you're called according to his purpose, especially if you're chosen for his ministry and for his, the extension of his gospel, especially if your gifts is in alignment with his purpose. If you speak something, and I'm going to give you a, um, uh, an example of what I'm saying. If you speak something, it will come to pass. Be careful what you say to, about yourself. Be careful what you say about others. Be very careful. Even if they're wrong, even if they've hurt you, be careful what you say. That's why Jesus said, pray for your enemies. Pray for them. Because honestly, if you speak a word against them, it will come to pass. Especially if you are a faithful believer. Right? So do not go now proclaiming and speaking against people. Just because you can. Because it's also in alignment with God's will. He will confirm according to his will. Okay? So Elijah, Elijah said it will not rain. And it did not rain. For three years, it did not rain. Okay? At the end of the day, he told the king, it's going to rain. Prepare for rain. And it did. Why? He went and he sought God's face. He bowed down. And he prayed. And it rained. Did they have sign that it was going to rain before it rained? No. But he, when he prayed... God answered, and it rained. God will, God will confirm your words if you are a servant of his. And here's where you can know false prophets. If they prophesy something over your life and you don't get confirmation from God for yourself, for yourself, it's a lie. Especially if what they prophesy doesn't come to pass. You know, don't, don't keep believing in the lies. Once some, if somebody tell you something's going to happen and it doesn't happen, you know, that prophecy was a lie. But because sometimes persons could see things like they could, they could think they see things, you know, but who is showing them the things? Demons could be showing them the things too, you see. So it's very, you have, we have to be very careful who we listen to and what we take in as being from God. Because the devil has appeared to be an angel of light as well a lot of persons are thinking they're worshiping jesus when in fact it is the devil they're worshiping so we had to be very careful especially when you're seeking after too much miracles and you want too much easy way out jesus said you will have in this world you have tribulations he said tribulations for a reason remember the world doesn't love jesus so the world will not love his followers that's just the way it is but we should be of good cheer because he overcome the world. So let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. And if you're going through something that is rough, and if your temptation is, is grievous, and if your trial is a lot, remember Jesus. Hang on until the end. He gives you grace. He gives you peace as well. And he will give you patience and endurance. Seek his face. I'm telling you because I know I've been there. So I'm not just saying something you should do and I have no, I have no um, clue. <laughs> I have some testimonies too, right? And I could tell you, trust no one else. If you trust Jesus totally, 100%, it's hard, still trust. It's rough, still trust. You don't see it happening, still trust. He's going to show up for you and he's going to help you and he's going to deliver you. Even if that deliverance come in the form of death to leave this world. Because it's death for us is not death for others. When you believe in Jesus, you're basically going into another life. You're transitioning. So, so, so fear not about death. Do not be afraid. Of I'm telling you, only person you should fear is God. That's it. Don't fear anybody else. Nothing else at all. Okay, so verse 27 that say to the deep, be dry and I will dry up thy rivers. Because he's mighty like that. He's great like that. He told them, go in Jordan and the water will part. And it did. Remember the Red Sea? It part. They walked on dry ground. You know, 
what are the things that are going through your life that you think is so difficult? Put it before God. Put it before God. Whatever your situations are. Cry out. Ask for help. You will get it. It's guaranteed. You must trust. You must believe. And you must cry out. Somebody else can't cry out for you. You must cry out for yourself. Verse 28. That saith of Cyrus, he is my shepherd and shall perform all my pleasures. Even saying to Jerusalem, thou shalt be built and to the temple thy foundation shall be laid. And this verse was basically prophecy indicating that, yes, the temple is destroyed because of idolatry. As, as I said before, it was very vile. The idolatry was just too much, you know, so it had to be destroyed. Everything had to be destroyed, you know. It was just profane. So Cyrus is a part of the Media Persian Empire. And he was the one through whom God gave the Israelites freedom to come back to Jerusalem and rebuild. And I mean, I will do a Bible study on that at some point. And we will go through Nehemiah and Ezra's account. And we'll talk about it. And you will see how many trials and tribulations have been through. Not this one thing. Trials and tribulations is a central part of your journey on earth when you are walking with God the Father and Jesus with the, with the, with the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Yeah? It's going to become something that's going to be in your life. Trials and tribulations. Why? Because the devil cannot stand us. He absolutely hates us because we're made in the image of God. And not only are we made in the image of God, we know him and we serve him. And because the devil wants worship for himself, he cannot stand to see God getting all the praise. So just be mindful that your worship, let it be in spirit and in truth. Let it be wholesome and unapologetic. The devil can stand it. But let it be unapologetic. You ain't apologizing because you worship God. You're not sorry because you're a follower of Jesus Christ. You are not apologizing because the only God you call on is the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Three in one. You're not sorry. So let, let it be clear who your God is. When you stand up to face any trials and, and, and tribulation, remember you do not face it alone. You do not face it alone. You never face it alone. Don't ever think you face it alone. I will leave with you one of my favorite <laughs> affirmation that we do not face alone. After Elijah would have done so much with God's help, and he has helped him a lot. He went running after this threat came to him that Jezebel wanted to kill him. And he ran because he was overwhelmed. He thought he was the only prophet. The only prophet of the Lord left. And here she wants to kill me. And he knows she would have killed him. But the point is, he did not even face death. Hallelujah. God is so good. He's so awesome. He's so fulfilling. There's no, there's no doubt in our God. There's no doubt that he will go to the extreme mile for us, you know. And what God revealed unto Elijah is that I have 7,000 that has never bowed before Baal, that has never turned away. So there were more prophets than he even knew of. That's how mighty our God is. That's how awesome he is. So when you think you're the only one going through something, fear not. You're not alone. He's right there with you. And you have other persons who are going through similar things as you. And they could lend you strength. That's why we share. That's why we fellowship. That's why we serve God together. Okay? So let us pray. Father, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you in Jesus. Because you have been good to us. 
you have been merciful you have been true you have been so awesome there are no words to describe you the, the dictionary is too limited but you are so mighty to save and you are so gracious to deliver us and you redeem us unto yourself you draw us into your bosom and you declare over us mine so that there is no doubt whose we are there is no doubt who you are to us there is no doubt and i'm happy that there is absolute belief and faith and trust and hope that the truth is we are loved and cared for and we matter to you you care about us we are important to you jesus died for us that says it all and so as we are about to go from this bible study plant the seeds holy spirit let us remember that we are catered for we are delivered and we should not trust in any other god and let us let us walk with you and point out in our lives anything that we have been putting as lord over you and before before i close out i proclaim i give you back your words father I ask that you frustrate the tokens of the liars i ask that you make the diviners mad i ask that you turn wise men backward and you make their knowledge foolish when they try to exalt themselves above you, when they try to do harm to us, frustrate them. But for the flesh and blood, because we wrestle not against flesh and blood, for the flesh and blood, our fellow brothers and sisters who are trying to hurt us, I pray that they may find salvation in Jesus and be saved. As for the demons, the devil and his angels, you know best how to serve them. They're just desserts. So I believe in you and I trust in you. I hope in you. And we give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Peace be unto you as Jesus gives. Let us receive. Have a good day. Thanks for being with me.